quantum field and the quantum realm is teaching you from behind and underneath. You may not see it, but whatever is coming into your field to interact with you, no matter where it's coming from, if it's coming into your field, it's from the Aleph and it's meant to deal in instructing your inner man so we can deal with our anger and our frustration and our resentments so that we can be in the place of strong leader teaching shepherds that have the authority of our heart and bring forth words of revelation that bring people into union instead of separation separation and division. Such an amazing Can letter. I share something on that? Yeah. That that the olive is more um how I see this, it's like an atmosphere, but the olive being absolute in the expression of where we are in our embodiment of flesh, we never cease from the pointing and the teaching to speak to say. Right. And so in that definition, we are the olive is a language of summation that envelops us by that summation so by being absolute it teaches us absolute by pointing absolute we speak absolutely until we are fully engrafted as the vibration of this is beyond and so this is the great expanse mm -hmm. that comes back to envelop us at mm -hmm. some quickly approaching time to say well done mm -hmm. you no longer need to be taught because now you're the expression you are, you are it you are. and so this is this is what this is what we're going into so it's a very very purposed, passionate um, revelation when we know that we never cease from being taught because we, we never cease from speaking until this is manifest and it's called the place of silence. Yes, I was just going to say that. So yes, you are in the absolute state of being. You no longer need to speak a thing unless you want to fully because invalidated. you're yeah you're invalidated you no longer need validation because you are you no longer need to support you because you are the foundation and and may we all arrive in that place may we all arrive there sooner than later because the ego is really the one that's seeking that validation and we, and we need to have that in our beginnings because the ego is scared to death of everything it's scared of its own shadow saying that intentionally and we need to be validated. That was mother's job to validate us. And in reparenting, we need it. But there, there comes a time and a place where that validation is no longer needed. And if somebody is constantly seeking validation from me, I will be that mother paw and I'll go, stop it. <laughs> like we were talking about the lioness of sacrament. Stop it. I don't need to validate you. You need to validate yourself so you can move into the more mature place of invalidation in becoming the frequency of the Aleph. The Aleph stands alone. It is validated. It is. It is one. It is truth. It is the absolute. And that's the goal of the language of what I'm trying to teach you and what Ken is so that we can get ourselves there. So having said that, when we were talking about before about Yeshua the the yod hey sheen vav hey that anointing that ishu was teaching and i've shared this before but for inculcation's sake for you guys to connect to this his teachings were called yelaf he was not teaching lamed and we're going to go into detail on the lamed when we deal with the symbol lamed <laughs> that's a ways away but he was teaching the advanced teachings of the yelaf notice that what we were talking about, about the enveloping mm -hmm. and about the refracting and about things coming back to itself. That is part of what the teachings were with yod Hey shin vav Hey with the Yeshua teachings. The difference is we have the active form of the Aleph. Remember the yod Hey vav Hey, the God-man, the active part of the Aleph at the head? This is the active part of the teachings that envelop you to teach Christ, the anointing. You guys catching that? So again, the word Christ is not an entity outside of you. It's not something. It is you at your highest development. Your summation. Walking the summit of your mountain. So the teachings that Ishu was providing was the yod He sheen vav He teachings called Yalaf. That's what the teachings were called. So if, if somebody was saying, oh, I'm in the Yalaf. Now, of course, you would say other words. You, I don't, um, Ani Be'laf. I'm in Yalaf. Yeah. Anyway, 
it, to put it in the Hebrew or Aramaic aspect of it. But this is what he was teaching. And he was teaching it to the students that were already of the Lamed teaching means that they were already able to play well with each other in the sandbox. Lamed teachings are mother's teachings that make sure that I'm not going to punch you and you're not going to punch me. We have respect for ourselves and we have respect for one another. And we share well. And we share well. This is the deeper teachings of the inward journey so that we can have authority within. So Yalaf is directly connected to Aleph. So I want you to be able to connect to that, that this is what the instructions look like. And it was through the sacred languages. Again, he was bringing it to a Greek audience. His brothers and sisters that were the Jews, that was kept, they were kept out of their inheritance. And he was bringing it back by bringing this. He didn't, he didn't need to tell them how to play well with each other because the, the, um, the Namosa, the Greek law did a great job of hedging them in so that they couldn't break it. That's why the Pharisees were there to keep them in line, but he wanted to bust them out of that system because it was so restrictive and so limiting that they couldn't step into their Christ anointing. That's what this is. This is the gatekeeper to the absolute. Yes. This is a, a leg. It means you have to do work with it. Yes. You have to integrate to the D to fulfill the title. It's a, it's a language of inheritance. So this would be responsibility. And then this would be the full measure of ingathering it as an inheritance. As. As the title. Yep. And with that, with that yod right there, because it is connected to the hand, we're going to go into detail with it more. Um, when I get it in order, we've already discussed a lot of it, but it's connected to vision. What Ken and I are doing for you, what I'm doing for you right now, is I'm painting you the vision of the Aleph itself, so you know the beginning of the journey and the end destination. I'm literally telling you the beginning and the end of the return back into origin, the return back to your first love by expressing them through the letters. But it takes work to get there. Would you say that's a mountaintop? Absolutely. This is a mountaintop. This is the summit experience. And when we get to the summit experience, we turn down from the summit. We come back down to the base to gather with others that are willing to take that mountain journey. And we bring them Yalaf. Yalaf gets us to the summit. We turn and we come back down to bring the Yalaf. Ishu could not teach what he was teaching until he became the statue of the teachings. He couldn't. He didn't have any authority until he became that. Then he was the strong leader teaching shepherd that spoke the language of revelation. He was an Aleph. I and my father are one. Would you say that that would be the staff of Moshe to the mountaintop? Oh, absolutely. I'm just using rhetorical yeah, questions, yeah. but to assist people to see. You know how much I, I love. Well, not rhetorical to you, but I mean, like, <laughs> for perspective, so we can, some of us think in pictures. I think in right. pictures. And if I can connect that word to a picture, I go, wait a minute. This is the base of the mountain or a midway point that is telelogically showing me to the peak. I'm not there yet, but it's showing me the mechanism of supporting me to get to my own summit. So I'm assembled. Right. So that would be Nakashtan. Yes. Yeah, that would be Nakashtan for those of you who have been following kids' teachings for a while. Thank you.